Hello all you beautiful people out there, what is going on? This is your friend Birdie coming at you fast with another Paragon related video and today we are going to be focusing on Ethereal Clash of Souls. The reason I say Paragon related is because in this video I will be talking about how Ethereal is not Paragon. That a lot of people waiting for these post Paragon projects like Predecessor and Core have also kind of lumped in Ethereal since people like I have covered it in the past alongside other games and I wanted to make this video clearly stating that Ethereal has nothing to do with Paragon. The only similarity that they have is that they're third person MOBAs with verticality. That's it. Everything else, the lore, the art, the combat, all that is going to be unique and it's not going to be the same as Paragon at all. Paragon and Ethereal, the only thing they share in similarities is the fact that they're third-person MOBAs with verticality. I wanted to say that a second time in order to stress that. But I don't just want to leave the video there because then we're done. We're done with the video now. Congratulations. We did it. I also want to talk about why Ethereal has a chance, just a small chance, but it does have a chance to be even better than our beloved Paragon that we miss so dearly, which is why we still watch this completely irrelevant channel. Before we get to the rest of the video, please consider dropping a like that does help this video surface to the top because it does kind of rejigger the YouTube algorithm. And the longer you watch these videos, the better chance they have at going to the top of the pages as well. For other people who are looking for new third person MOBAs to play, it'll help me out a lot. So please hit that like button if you haven't already and also subscribe and hit the notification bell for more of these videos in the future. Now, let's get into the topic at hand as to why I believe that Ethereal has a chance to be better than Paragon. The reason that Paragon was so fun and why it did so well in the beginning before Epic decided to have some internal issues and screw everything up was the fact that it was very unique and it was ahead of its time in terms of graphics, in terms of combat, in terms of fluidity in the game itself. And while there were bugs and glitches here or there, because the game technically never left alpha or beta, sure, it was slightly excusable, but the gameplay itself was smooth and fun, and that's undeniable. And that's really what set Paragon apart from its competitors, where at the time was only really Smite, where Smite feels a little clunky, and you're locked with the Y-axis in Smite. You can't jump and do backflips and fly into the air like Sereth. You're limited to the ground. Now, I'm not going to sit here and trash on Smite. Smite is a good game in its own accord. I'm just saying that there could be better games out there, and Paragon proved that. Now, Ethereal has a chance to even one-up Paragon because it'll even add more new things to the fray. It'll add flying, complete flying with Sky Slayers. Vertical, literally vertical lanes. Top lane floating in the sky, mid lane floating below it, and then bottom lane being on the ground below that with minions and bosses in the air as well. Bosses that evolve throughout the game and have weak points that you need to target. And of course, parkour, destructible environment, just all these ambitious things that can make Ethereal the craziest MOBA to ever hit the market ever. And there is a possibility that it can one-up Paragon in that sense and that it will be the new game that is ahead of its time because no other MOBA has destructible environments in it on the same scale as Ethereal Clash of Souls and Undying Games is promising. Same thing with parkour and jumping from one lane to another lane. It sounds incredibly ambitious. But at the same time, while it does sound incredibly ambitious, that is also my biggest concern, is that will they bite off way more than they can actually chew, and will it collapse under its own weight? That is my biggest concern when it comes to Ethereal Clash of Souls. So yes, it does have a chance to one-up Paragon, but it also has a chance to collapse in on itself like Paragon. However, Paragon collapsed in on itself due to... Epic Games just making very terrible internal decisions. Whereas Ethereal Clash of Souls has a chance to collapse in on itself by just simply being way too big for itself. And this isn't me not having trust in the developers. 
I do have trust in the developers. It sounds like they know what they're doing, and it's not a small team. Like I said in the past, their team is composed of about 50 uh, people. So it it's not like, you know, just a dude in his garage, okay? Like Ty Lopez. It seems like they are generally trying and are going to put something together. And I do have faith in them as they continuously roll out content and have been promising a trailer sometime in the upcoming months. I'm assuming in the next six months or so. And that's a very conservative assumption. I really hope we see something before the end of the year. I think that would be incredible. But worst case scenario, I'm thinking six months. In the next six months, we'll see a trailer at least, right, of what's to come from the gameplay perspective because the gameplay that I've been showing from Ethereal as of right now is very, 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 very early, like first baby steps pre-alpha gameplay just in-engine stuff. So they have something to work with and something to demonstrate and something to test with uh, because obviously they're still working on the game itself. So the gameplay I'm showing you is not going to be representative of the gameplay that will be in the final product of Ethereal Clash of Souls. So I think it's very important to be excited for this game, but also keep in mind that there is also that possibility that it could be too ambitious. And if it does become too ambitious, I wouldn't necessarily mind the developers pulling back a little bit and maybe taking parkour out, maybe taking even a uh, destructible environment out, maybe reducing the way flight works and just making the map smaller because it does seem pretty, pretty crazy. And we'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. Yes, there is slight inspiration from Paragon, as there is also slight inspiration from other MOBAs like League of Legends and Dota 2, and maybe even a little bit of Smite. And there's also tons of RPG elements and inspiration they've taken from games like Final Fantasy. I've said this in the past, that they are pulling from a plethora of previous titles and genres to construct this game. So to call it Paragon 2, especially when you're comparing it to games like Predecessor and Core that are actually trying to make successors to Paragon, or <laughs> in the case of Predecessor, you know, they're trying to make a predecessor to Paragon, you know what I'm saying? Calling Ethereal Paragon 2 is just a mistake. It's nowhere close, and it actually hinders the brand name of Ethereal and the way it is seen in the future by future consumers, so it would just be a damper to its name, and we should all collectively stop referring to it as another Paragon, the next Paragon, Paragon 2, or what, whatever you might call it. I have made that transition now, and I'm aware that in the past, I might have done so in order for some extra views, but at this point, I don't care about any of that stuff. Just what matters to me most is that one of these games comes out, it does well, and we have something new to play. I don't even care anymore at this point. Just get something out. But make sure it's good. But get something out that's good. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, drop a like, comment, subscribe, all that good, good stuff. As always, make sure I have a wonderful day. Peace.